Magbanawa assures them that they'll get their money the next day. This is the same time frame, roughly, that Wendy Adelson was visiting the crime scene. Wendy indicated that she went to turn on a Trescott from Centerville Road, observed a roadblock, and then turned around. But we learned that what she said happened could not have happened. Instead, the roadblock was all the way down here by the blue dot, the blue, oh, I've got two blue dots. The one at the top, top left of the, of the page there is where the roadblock was, that yellow line, three to, three to five houses down from the scene. Trescott and Centerville is all the way down where the other yellow car is. Visible from the roadblock that she approached and was observed doing so by Officer Brannon were multiple law enforcement vehicles, marked vehicles. There was crime scene tape up. There was a marked vehicle of an officer stationed at, at the perimeter. It was visible from that position that there was something going on at her kid's house. The house where they lived with their father. And what did Wendy Adelson do upon encountering this roadblock and observing that the police were, were present on the street where her kids lived? She turned around and proceeded to the liquor store to pick up her bullet bourbon. And the defendant says, well, this is another coincidence because she was asked to bring it to a party. Well, maybe. But the timing of the purchase and the fact that she went out of her way to go by the crime scene on her way to get the bullet bourbon should raise an eyebrow. But it's what she didn't do that's even more suspicious. She didn't ask Officer Brandon, hey, what's going on? She didn't call Danny. She didn't call the police to make any inquiries or even the daycare to make sure her kids made it there that morning. Remember, Danny had her kids. She didn't even call the daycare. Meanwhile, our shooters are headed back to Miami. They pop up on an ATM camera at 6.45 p.m. in Pembroke Pines, Florida. And then both of their phones are consistent with being at Rivera's residence as of about 7 p.m. that night. At 8.23... Two days later. What I'm saying is, like, I'm involved and I, I look at it in the, in the case. And I'm like, it looks crazy. It looks... The ex-wife was out of her way to drive by the murder scene right after hitting them coming to her husband, ex-husband. After she talked to her mother and brother. Yeah. Like, you just, you just painted a picture of the definition of conspiracy. You hear that, and everyone wants to know why haven't they been arrested? They just they painted the picture. The, pic the problem is, it's all a false premise. I, I, at first, I didn't even think she was there. I thought it was bullshit if she actually was there. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. When, when, when I heard that that officer said, oh, I saw a minivan that looked like you know, my wife's minivan, it's a Honda Odyssey, it's burgundy, and it fit the description of the ex-wife. I'm thinking, like, this guy is such an asshole. He's making the shit up. Like, there's tons of these out here. Wendy wasn't there. He wasn't. Wendy was there. The ex-wife should not. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, if I'm sitting at a bar and someone tells me the story of the, of the call back, you know, mind you, like, then you throw in the motive for relocation and they keep bringing it up. Right. And then you throw in the crazy, crazy emails. The other people are crazy. They go out of context. They're crazy. And you tell me how she benefits. And she's the one, the one showing up. Like, if I was sitting at a bar and I was going, like, yeah, she has nothing to do with it. You know what I would say? It's a hell 
I can put two and two together. Like, you know what? What, what would you say if someone says that to you? The thing is, I get it, and I, and you're 100% right, and it all sounds like, like it's piling on, except she really wasn't on trial there. You were. But and he spent more time on her. And relocation and this and that. Yeah. But here's, here's the thing. If she was a part of it, then I had to get fun. And if you if you if you sit there go over all that stuff and I just blame you. And I said, uh, and you said no. It's, I can add two plus two. That sounds, that sounds very, 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 very suspicious. And you can get in your head that this girl had to be the one her was about to transpire. That, that it's not a, it's a small step to go into it. The small step. Because look at the connection. Look at them. Look at them right now. You know? Look at, look at who my ex girlfriend was. Look at, and then look who was there. And look who's showing up. So here's the thing if you could make it seem when she's lying about the relocation, if she's lying about her feelings about Tallahassee, if she, all she wants to do is move, and all that gets accomplished, and then she couldn't help herself and show up at the crime scene, if you can prove that, you can make 